So, if you all know me, I am a runner. And I run. Before I got on Zoom tonight, I went out and ran a mile. So, the message for tonight is life is like a run. So, pretty much, when you go out and run, or you're going through life, it can be hard at times, it can be easy at times. So, um, I got five points tonight. Might add a couple more. You know me, I talk a lot. But uh, I'm going to go through here and pretty much think of it like a run. You're comparing life to a run. So the first point is, sometimes the run can hurt. When you're running along or going through any sport or anything like that, your side starts hurting, your hip starts hurting. Uh, same in life. Something happens where um, something dies. Your dog dies. You uh, get hurt. Um, parent gets sick, something along that line, it can hurt. And it can really make you want to quit the race. It can really make you want to give up on life. Or in our faith, it can really make you want to just abandon your faith. And as Christians, we can't do that. So in Job, chapter 2, Verse 7 and 8. And give me a second. There it is. So Satan went from out. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and afflicted Job with painful sores from the soles of his feet to the crown of his head. Then Job took a piece of broken pottery and scraped himself with it as he sat among the ashes. So, Satan infected uh, Job with so much pain, and if you've read more of Job, you know he caused a lot more pain in his life. His daughters died, his sons died, his flocks, his herds, and all these thing, bad things happened to Job. And that hurt. That's his ankle giving out. That's his hip hurting. That is his side hurting. All that hurt. But when you're running the race... You can't worry about the hurt. You have to just keep pushing through. You have to keep trusting God and keep going through it. Um, when you are going through it, though, it's also good to find stuff that helps. Sometimes people can help you. Sometimes people can put you down. And that takes us on to the next part. Some things help in the race. Some things don't. And I'm moving through this faster than I thought already. But... Um, we continue reading on to verse 9 here. His wife said to him, Are you still maintaining your in integrity? Curse God and die. He replied, You are talking like a fool, a foolish woman. Shall we accept eh, Shall we accept good from God and not the terrible? In all this, Job did not sin in what he said. So look at his wife there. His wife pushed him down. She literally just tore him down and that's not helpful. That's like in a race when the wind's hitting you. People can be a good influence on you. People can lift you up. People can tear you down. And when I'm running in that race, if there's a breeze, that breeze can cool me down, or it can push against me and slow me down. Sometimes, the stuff we think is helping us, isn't always helping us too. In life, when we're going through life, there will be many things going on, whether it be with friends, or just stuff we like to do. Um, we can, there might, it's like you're running that race, and the breeze. If the breeze is behind me and it's pushing me, it helps. It feels nice. It cools me down. But if it's coming at me, it may cool me down and feel good at the time. It may help me in the moment, but really it's slowing me down and it's causing me to waste more energy. Same with friends. If we continue reading to verse 13, when Job's three friends and I'm not going to be able to say these names right, but uh, if, if I might 
you get the point with the name, heard about all his troubles that he had come upon, they set out from their homes and met together by agreement to go and sympathize with him and comfort him. When they saw him with a distant, when they saw him from the distance, they could hardly recognize him. They began to weep aloud and they tore their robes and sprinkled dust on their heads. So, right there, they're already, they're coming to lift him up. They're not coming to tear, his down, tear him down. His wife already is tearing him down. And, uh, when, when you have friends in this world, you have to not focus on the ones that tear you down. I can't focus on the wind hitting me. I can't focus on the sweat in my eye. I can't focus on any of that stuff. You just have to focus on moving forward. We, so we continue on to Job chapter 3, 1 through 3. Give me a sec. After this, Job opened his mouth um, and cursed the day he was of his birth. He said, May the day of my birth perish, and the night that set it a boy conceived, that day may it turn to darkness. May God above not care about it. May no light shine on it. So right there, he's down. He is down in the dumps. He has hit rock bottom. But, and that whole, all of chapter 3 there is pretty much him doing that. He's down in the dumps. So that is him going through, and he's down. And we'll come back to that in a minute. But if you move on to chapter 4, 1 through 6, his friends that came to him, then... Eliphaz the Tamari, I can't say names to save my life, replied, If someone ventures a word with you, will you be patient? But who can keep from speaking? Think how you have instructed many, how you have strengthened feeble hands. Your words support those who stumble. You have strengthened faltered knees, but now you, troubles come to you and you are discouraged. It strikes you and you are dismayed. Should not your pity be your confidence and your blamelessness and your blameless ways your hope? So if you look there, he's hit rock bottom. His friend is helping him out. In the same way, especially when you're running with someone. If you go out and run with someone in a race, I ran a half marathon a couple years ago, and there was a ton of people there. And even if I uh, didn't know any of the people there, I saw people running, and just looking at them and following them helped me to continue on with that race. And that race was hard, but people can lift you up, and we can lift others up. You have to continue to push on when you're doing that and help people and get friends close to you who are going to lift you up. I'm not saying you shouldn't help the people who are going to tear you down, but you can't let them tear you down is what I'm saying. Okay, and back to chapter three, his attitude. So point number three Attitude matters. If I am out running in a race, or I am running on, I run on the street out here, or wherever I'm running, and let's say my side does start hurting. Let's say um, I get sweat in my eye, or whatever happens. My hip's hurting, whatever. If I whine about that, if I get sad about that, it's just going to make it worse. The same goes for us in life. When you are in life, 
And I'm not saying you can't get sad about circumstances in your life. Everyone gets sad about circumstances. Everybody cries. What I'm saying is when you're going through a circumstance, when that bad thing happens, you have to focus on good. When I'm running in that race, if it's hurting, I'm, I just keep saying, keep going, keep going. It's like the train going up the hill. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Or I know I can, I know I can, I know I can. And that's what you have to do. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter how hard it gets. Positive outlook um, on it will make it better. Job in that chapter 3 where he was cursing the day he was born if his friend I don't know this for sure but if his friends wouldn't have been there it might have been the end for him but you know what he pushed through he did and I think a lot of times about when my runs the best part of my runs is when I hit that low spot and I am hurting so bad and then I get that positive mindset. The second I get that positive mindset, it makes that run all much better. All the better. Um, my grammar's not great, but it makes it all the better. A positive mindset can turn the worst situation into a better situation. I'm not going to say a great situation, but a better situation. <sighs> okay, we're going to continue here. Um, as you run through life, you have to avoid distractions. So a distraction could be anything from a video game to a more serious thing. Um, there is so many distractions out there, and I'm not going to linger too much on distractions because um, a lot of people have talked about distractions in their messages. But example, when I'm running, if there's a raspberry on the side of the road, I'll pick it, and that's fine. I can pick one raspberry, but if you, it takes you away from the race, takes you away from the run, that's where you struggle. That's where it's no longer just a good thing and it's a bad thing. If I stop and I start picking each one of those raspberries and I stop running, that's where it becomes an issue. If I start playing video games, that's fine. If the video games take me away from God, that's not fine. If a girlfriend takes me away from God, that's not fine. Or boyfriend for the girls on here, no. God comes first. You have to focus on the path. And this is where we're going to be jumping to Colossians. I just have the one verse here, so I'm not going to make you guys necessarily jump there. But it's Colossians 3, verse 2. Set your mind on the things above and not on earthly things. And that is what we have to do. We have to continue to push forward and follow Christ. We cannot get distracted by things. And it can be pains. Like going back to the hurt. Hurt can distract you. And that's when you just have to push through it and continue to keep your eyes on God. And uh, I went through quite fast, but my final point of the night, make sure to finish the race. So um, I ran a lot when I was younger. And uh, the one run that always sticks out to me, I went out about five in the morning uh, something like that, and I went out to run 10 miles. Uh, this was a couple years ago, and uh, I got about 5 miles in, and I was hurting so bad, I called my dad and said, hey dad, can you come get me? He was up, he was getting ready to leave for work, he came and got me, and that run sticks with me to the, sticks to, with me to this day. Because you know what, I didn't finish it. I failed it. And that was just a run. That run is not, it sticks with me and it hurts still, but it is a meaningless run. Life, you're, you following Christ, that is the most important thing in your life. 
that race, I regret that run because I failed it. If you fail at life, if you do not get to heaven, you will regret that the rest of your life. And don't get me wrong, we are going to fail in life, here or there. You're going to fail the small races, but that's okay. But the one race you don't want to fail is um, following Christ. So we're going to flip back to Job, and we're going to go to Job 42. Give me a second. This is the one I forgot to bookmark. Okay. Job 42, verse 12 and 13. Okay. The Lord blessed uh, the later part of Job's life more than the former part. He had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, and thousands of yoke, of oxen, and a thousand donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. So Job, he made it. He made it through the race he was going through. He had a hard race. He lost everyone in his life, almost. He pretty much did. He had one of the worst lives ever. Uh, worse than mine. His life was great, and then all of a sudden it just turned. And that'll happen sometimes. But in the end, he got to the end of that, and he was serving Christ still. And it all turned around. And it might not turn around for you in this life. It might not. This entire life for you might be terrible. But in the end, the thing that matters is you get to heaven. And you bring people with you. I have one more verse here. From Second Timothy. And it's uh, chapter 4. verse 7 and 8 I have fought the good fight I have finished the race I have kept the faith now there is stored for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord has, the Lord the righteous judge will award me on that day and not only to me but also to all who have longed for his appearing so we run this race we run in this run and no matter how hard it gets no matter how much pain no matter how much pain of life no matter what happens no matter who we lose no matter what's going on in it as long as we continue to follow christ in the end we will be rewarded it doesn't matter if you had the worst life ever if you continue to follow Christ, that will be your reward in the end. And uh, that is uh, mostly it. It was uh, shorter than I thought, but 